So you want to make a full size chessboard and you're not satisfied with those chintzy little thin chessboard molds you can get from Amazon or Etsy. Well, here's a solution. I'm Sean from Craft Elements and this is our new 19 inch by 19 inch uh, chessboard mold. Each of the squares is two inches by two inches and it is 0.2 inches deep. So roughly a quarter inch deep. Uh, the two inch by two inches is the important part because uh, that is competition uh, grade or level certification, whatever you want to call it. It's a big chessboard. As you can see, it's big, it's a heavy mold, and obviously you're going to pay for it. And if you know Craft Elements products, you can uh, understand why. But today I'm going to be doing a demonstration on this new chessboard mold. And I'm going to be using some uh, epoxy resin I've already mixed up from Total Boat Maker Epoxy slash Jess Crow. Um, this is a Jess Crow Total Boat product. And it's a good product for doing these types of pours because I only have, you know, 0.2 inches of height or depth rather. So it's going to be perfect for that. I don't need to use a deep casting resin. It's not going to get hot enough. Now, because these are individual squares separated by roughly an eighth inch um, borders, I'm going to need to be a little bit more precise. I can't just take my, you know, my cup and go blah. So I've got these funky little um, squeezy bottles. Um, I get them in bulk from Amazon. I get like a, I don't know, 20 or 30 pack and it works out to less than a dollar each, but you pretty much dispose of these after. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind if you're doing like resin art and stuff like that. This is a great way to, to attack uh, projects like this. Um, I'm gonna use our two colors from Black Diamond Pigments. Thank you Black Diamond for sending us this kit. Uh, we're, we've got purple and we've got green apple. Um, and I'm choosing these crazy colors for a chessboard because I don't wanna do just a black and red or black and green or red and green, whatever typical chessboard colors. We've got Halloween coming up. So I'm gonna make this kind of like a spooky kind of Halloween themed chessboard. Now I wanna talk about this mold for a second. Obviously it is super thick. The total depth uh, on the outside is half an inch. So basically you can get half inch thick finished resin pieces out of there here. This is not really a mold that you're gonna be using with wooden resin. However, what we're gonna be doing after is once we actually make this chessboard and pull it out, we're gonna have a solid resin piece. We're then gonna mount it to a piece of wood and make it even thicker. So even though this isn't made for wood specifically, you can definitely take your resin chessboard, mount it to a nice piece of wood, whether it be live edge or something um, equivalent or maybe a little bit uh, larger in terms of having a, a larger perimeter. Um, and mounting that piece of resin to the wood with resin and having a single wood and resin, wood and resin uh, chessboard. So enough blabbing, I've gone ahead and applied my MG Chemicals 8329 mold release to this. Always use this stuff guys. Um, don't use a silicone based mold release with a silicone mold. Make sure you use the correct non-silicone based mold release. There's a few of them available. Don't use PAM. <laughs> Um, I'm not wearing a mask. I've got some ventilation on. I'm going to say that because I have to say that in every video because if I don't say that, people give me a hard time for working with resin and not wearing a mask. So guys, just, just know that I'm aware. <laughs> if you're working with resin, put on a mask, put on a you know P95 or P100 uh, respirator and you're good to go. So I'm going to go is off to the sides and get this started, pour these into my little cups and we'll start pouring. Okay, so we can just get started arbitrarily, choose whatever color you want and do every other square. Um, and then just know that these are roughly 0.44 ounces per square. So there's 64 squares. So in total to fill, fill all these squares, you need roughly, I think 28 ounces of resin, uh, give or take. Uh, so we're gonna have to refill these bottles a few different times. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started here. And I will fast forward this so you can not have to watch me fill every single square.
for this piece surrounding, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some more Maker Poxy. I'm gonna use a mix of black diamonds, black diamond color and starry night color. And then tomorrow, once this is all set up, I'm going to uh, put the base layer of clear on. And then once that's set, we can basically demold it. this quickly with a torch and with silicone molds never hold the torch close to the mold you just want to do a quick wave and if not you could just use a heat gun for this but don't use open flame right on the silicone molds <laughs> Okay, folks, we are back. It is the next day. It's been sitting here for uh, 12, 16 hours. Either way, it's hard enough that we can do that second layer. So that base, that next layer rather, is basically gonna tie all these squares together um, and give us a solid piece of resin once we demold it. Um, I did have a little bit of a mistake where I think this table or this uh, board isn't exactly level. So I had a little bit of seepage of the black outer resin into one of these purple squares. Hopefully it's just along the bottom, otherwise we're gonna have a slightly discolored square on that one. But you live and you learn, you just get over it. Now my plan is to of course mount this to a wood base and I'm gonna use some gray, medium gray urethane or rather verethane stain uh, here on that wood base, basically a gray wood. So I wasn't really sure what color should do, should I make gray, aluminum, black? I don't know, I don't wanna mess this up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same uh, color, but in a darker uh, tone black. So I'm gonna mix some black diamond, black diamond color pigment and some black diamond starry night to do the rest of this base layer, which I hope is gonna look really good on the gray stained uh, wood mantle or board, so to speak, um, that we're gonna mount this to. So I've gone ahead and mixed up uh, roughly 60 ounces of Maker Poxy. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need that much. I think I measured it out uh, and calculated this out that above the squares uh, accounting for this, this meniscus here, you're like a quarter inch, maybe 0.3 inches uh, high, um, 19 by 19. So yeah, it works out to like 55 or 56 ounces of resin. So I go on ahead and made 60 and hopefully I'll have enough. And I've got that pre-mixed here. Again, we are using Maker Poxy. It is a very thin pour. It's a fairly decent volume. So I hope that's not gonna come back and bite me but I think it should be okay. Uh, this is an art resin. It's good for like tabletop coating and stuff like that. So we shouldn't have any heat issues, but I'm gonna put a liberal amount of pigment in to make sure that this is a nice and black base, but you'll still see some of that starry night effect once I mix the starry night pigment in. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up now. And once I'm done, I'm gonna pour that in our mold. I think that 60 ounces worked out perfectly. We've got a nice, uh, good coverage here. I think this table or this board's still a little off because I'm seeing it's a little high there and a little low here. So I'm gonna go ahead and prop that up just to make sure we can level this out. Otherwise, I think it was my uh, lucky epoxy resin. I put that on everything shirt. That allowed me to calculate this out correctly. Okay, so we're gonna move this off the table. I'm gonna get to work on the wood base. Nothing crazy fancy here, but let's get started on that wood base. And then once this is set, we can take it off and put it on said wood base. So I've kind of scrounged through our wood pile and found this off cut of acacia. This is an acacia tabletop or something. I think it actually originally came from Home Depot. So it's finger jointed acacia. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down the middle. Uh, we're gonna plane both sides to get the stain off. 
and then we'll 45 a degree end four pieces, effectively creating like a window border or like a like trimming out a door, right? Four, 45, four pieces with 45 degree angles on each corner, glue them together and that'll be our square base. Now there are a few ways I could have built this frame. I just chose a very basic gluing the edges and uh, tacking them from the sides. This piece of plywood that I put in the middle is important because it's gonna support the additional weight of the resin. Clearly it doesn't weigh that much, but if I put the resin chessboard on here, it's gonna overlap roughly an inch on these sides. If it gets too hot, maybe it's sitting in the sun, the middle could possibly get soft and sink down. So this is the underside of the board, and I'm basically just providing a flat surface on the other side here uh, via this plywood to give the resin somewhere to fully sit on so it doesn't warp because it is only half an inch thick once it's pulled out of that mold. We certainly don't want that to happen. There's a few different ways I could have built this. Like I said, you could have used uh, dowel pins. You could have, um, you know, done some fancy joinery. This is certainly not fine woodworking. This is a quick and dirty method, but again, it serves a purpose. We're gonna sand this up, we're gonna fill it, we're gonna stain it. You're barely gonna notice the imperfections in the way this was assembled. I've already applied wood glue uh, between the uh, frame and this plywood, but just to get it so I can flip it over, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with hot glue to keep it in place while I turn it over. So I filled all these little holes and pits and stuff in this acacia, uh, which kind of happens naturally because I don't even think it's actually a tree, it's like a fern or something. So it's, it's quite uh, a rough in terms of uh, surface continuity. Anyway, I filled all that stuff with some standard wood filler, sanded it down a couple of times. I've sanded it to 180 grit, so it's relatively smooth. It's gonna be good enough to apply our stain. I'm using Verathane Ultimate Wood Stain, one coat, and the color is Weathered Gray. Now I did test this on a piece earlier. I'm not in love with the color. Um, I think it could be a little darker, but I also don't have anything else here in the shop right now that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this anyway. And hopefully the tone of this gray works with the tone of that purple and uh, green in the epoxy that we poured earlier for the, uh, the chessboard. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it with paintbrush you could use depending on how you want to put, put stain on I'm not a I'm not an expert finisher or an expert painter but I go with the grain 
and then we'll do a wipe off after letting it sit for a couple of minutes. And I do have my big doors open, heads up guys. So it's not perfect ventilation, but it is, <laughs> it's a little cold here in Canada today. Um, and uh, I've got enough airflow coming in here. But when you're working with stains and finishes, you should probably wear a respirator if you have one. I'm also going to do this plywood. Even though you're probably not going to see it, if we do have any translucency in that resin at all, I want to make sure you're not going to see a, a deviation between the dark finish exterior and then the middle interior. Only takes a few seconds to slap on some extra stains, so might as well just do it. That way we're guaranteed a consistent end result. So I've got a lint-free cloth here that I'm just going to use to rub the rest of this in and take off the excess so you can actually see some of that wood grain. If you leave the stain sitting on there that thick like I put it on with a brush, it's going to look more like paint and it's not going to, um, you're not going to really see any sort of wood. So you might as well just made this thing with the plywood or MDF. Just like anything, if you are unhappy with the level of coverage on this, the darkness, whatever you want to call it, you can wait, you know, 20 or 30 minutes for the initial coat to kind of set in and then come back, throw another coat on and wipe it off and get a little bit darker, which is probably what I will end up doing actually, because you still see a little bit of the orangeness of this acacia through here, which doesn't look bad, but I definitely would prefer less orange. So while that's drying, we could technically call this project done, but let's get a little bit more excessive here. We've got access to our laser engraver. We've got a nice piece of wood um, that is now stained. I think it'd be really, really cool to add some sort of a Victorian pattern, uh, essentially a Victorian line drawing around the perimeter that's going to be exposed past the um, resin chessboard. So I've gone ahead and logged into my Vectorstock account, and you can find a ton of stuff on Vectorstock. Um, I've got some Victorian ornamental lines here. I'm going to go ahead and download this, import it into Lightburn, and then we're going to take that piece of wood that we just finished with the stain over to the laser cutter and engrave some funky looking lines. Our back layer on this chessboard is set and we're ready to demold. Are you guys ready for this? I'm kind of excited. Obviously the first pour I've done using this mold and I know it's going to be a very, very cool project. And just like all of our other silicone molds, they come off super easily. As you can see here, just gently pull it back. Don't rip, just do it gently. It's not a, not a race. All right, ready? Boom. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So what's the next step? Well, if you are a resin artist and you just wanted to make a solid resin board, you're pretty much done. You can come and trim some of this sharp edges, meniscus, whatever you want to call it, off. Uh, we got a little bit of overpour here. We can just trim that off, but otherwise that is done. I had some questions about this, uh, specifically the lines in the board. Uh, so obviously these are voids. Uh, They're 0.2 inches deep, just like the squares. Uh, it's up to you. You could leave them like this. You could backfill the whole thing with clear resin, essentially a flood coat. Or if you want to be uh, really creative, you could actually color these lines and fill them with resin using one of those same squeezy bottles that they use for those squares. So fill the squeezy bottle up and just go very, very carefully. If you are going to backfill this entire thing, I would suggest sanding the entire top surface because once you backfill it with clear resin, um, if you've got any clear resin left on this, it's going to end up ruining your surface. So if you're going to, if you want to actually fill it, probably just do it in clear, sand the entire thing. I'm actually going to pour another one of these and do that method so you can see what I mean. 
But right now what we're gonna do is just clean up these edges and get this ready for mating. Mating to our bottom wood piece that we also made in this video. Oh, that looks slick. Actually, that gray color looks really good with that. I'm excited. Okay, so anyway, clean this up, then we'll get out our epoxy and we'll bond this to this, and then we'll actually have a completed project. I don't want to scratch the surface of that board when I flip it over, so I'm going to lay down some paper towel, or in this case, shop towels. Flip this guy over like that, and then we're just going to use some high grit sandpaper. I've got some 600 grit here, and that's going to be enough just to take, take off the, uh, the excess pieces. Doing that fine sand on these edges also make sure that they're deadly flat, which is important because we are going to mount this to that piece of wood. Um, if it was just a piece of resin, I don't think it would matter that much, but because we are going to be mounting it to a flat surface of wood, we want to make sure it's flat as well. All right, so we have a couple of different options here when it comes to mounting this piece of resin to this piece of wood. I did not um, spray this center. I've basically just sprayed the outside, which is all you're going to see. This is still just stained, but it's pretty rough, so it's going to bond to whatever we put on it. Uh, we can use hot glue, we could use super glue or CA glue, um, but in this case, it's just easy to use more resin. Honestly, if you take some more maker epoxy, we're going to apply it in here on the inside surface of this, drop it down, and that's going to bond the resin to the wood, and you're fine. Otherwise, we could have taken this, put it down, sanded this entire top first, sanded the entire top of the resin, and then flood coated the entire thing to essentially encapsulate the existing resin board and the wood as well and have a serious solid piece of super glossy resin. So there's a lot of different options. Um, but in this case, the easiest one, in my opinion, is just using some more maker epoxy um, in a small amount and using it essentially as an adhesive. So I cut this piece of plywood 17 inches by 17 inches. Our resin chessboard is 19 inches by 19 inches, so I'm gonna have a one inch overhang around the entire perimeter here. So when I apply my adhesive, again, the Maker Epoxy from Total Boat, uh, just apply it in a small, thin amount and staying away from the outside of that because we do not want the epoxy to come out uh, underneath the chessboard. We just want it to act as an adhesive in this case. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drip some in the middle here and I'm gonna spread it out with my hands and then we'll drop our chessboard in place. All right, we're gonna grab our chessboard, place it down, and center it with a ruler. Right, I'm happy with how that's laid out and we've kind of centered it on both axes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some tape and tape it down so it does not move because it's kind of got slippery resin under there. So it'll essentially act as a lubricant and slide around if uh, this thing gets hit or moved. All right, it's not going anywhere. We'll let it set up for about six hours and then that time the resin will be hard enough that it's not going to move anymore. And then we can pull out some custom chess pieces that I want to share with you guys. Okay guys, so we've taken this out of our mold, right? Yeah. Okay, we have. So there's treasure in it. There's treasure in it? Yes. Okay, there's treasure, guys. Um, so anyway, I told you I was gonna do a demonstration where we can actually backfill these lines. Um, so there's two options, as I had mentioned before. We can take our sander, 100, maybe an 80 grit, 120 grit, and do this entire surface, make it all nice and sanded up, 
and then flood coat it. That flood coating is obviously going to get into the uh, cracks, so to speak, these lines. It's also gonna put a top of resin on all these uh, squares. So if you're flood coating, ideally you're just gonna be using clear, right? You don't wanna put... Those are different colors, yeah. Can we talk to the camera first? Yeah. Okay, so um, clear is what you, you're doing is flood coating. However, if you wanted to put actual colors, glow in the dark, black, white, purple, whatever, to be honest with you, I actually love the look of this. I love the contrast out of the colors that's gone together. So I'm actually regretting putting this stuff in here, but I told you I was gonna do it uh, for demonstration. So I've gone ahead and picked up some Black Diamond Titanium Galaxy. It is a very shiny what pigment. It? It's called pigment. Oh. Yeah. So we say pigment? Yes. Okay, good. Then put it in there. We're gonna put it in there. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I was rudely interrupted, but um, I'm gonna take the pigment, mix up some resin, and then I'm gonna take another one of my squeezy bottles and just go really carefully and just trace all these lines to fill it all up with resin. I'm gonna get him out of here so he doesn't smell this stuff. And um, yeah, we'll see how it turns out. So in the second chessboard I made, I demonstrated how we could backfill these lines using a little squeezy bottle. However, it's still not perfect. It's not right up to the very surface of those squares. And my lack of hand-eye coordination slash impatience uh, ended up with a couple little sections where the resin overflowed those lines and onto the square. And it doesn't look awesome. So I'm going to demonstrate the other method now, which is essentially the flood coating method. Pretty much something you're going to only do with clear. It's not going to be something where you're going to tint or pigment the resin. Uh, but you do need to start by sanding this entire surface and all the edges. Use an 80 grit, 100 grit, max 120 grit. You do want a nice coarse surface there. It's gonna look really bad once you sand it up, but once you flood coat it, it's all gonna come back to life. If you go really, really high, the flood coat's gonna, not gonna stick correctly. You're gonna have separation, it's gonna be a mess. So 80 grit, 120, 80 grit, 100 grit, 120 grit, all you wanna do. So I'm gonna grab my 100 grit, I'm gonna sand this down, and then we're going to flood coat it with some maker epoxy and see what, how that turns out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some painter's tape or masking tape and do the perimeter. And that's just gonna allow us to more easily detach and get rid of the drips that inevitably happened when doing flood coating. Pretty simple trick. Um, and we'll just heat this tape up along with the resin and it should kind of peel off. We'll probably have to do a little bit of sanding, but not as much as if we just kind of flood coated this without preparing the back like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this onto here and then onto here. I'm putting this underneath because I wanna support this weight as much as possible. This is only half an inch and I just pulled it out of the mold yesterday. So the resin is set, but it's not fully cured. So I can technically really ream on this and bend it. And once we set it on this, I just don't, I wanna reduce the risk of it bending itself. So supporting it from underneath just a little bit uh, before I actually do that flood coat. So I've mixed up some Maker Poxy. I've got 12 ounces. It's really just a shot in the dark. I have no idea how much it's gonna to take to cover this. Um, I could calculate it out, but I'm kind of too lazy for that right now and I just wanna get the project done. So I've mixed it up and with this stuff, if you get a lot of bubbles in it, not a big deal because you're pouring it thin. So um, it's going to eventually dissipate or you can use your torch to uh, get rid of the rest of those bubbles. So I'm gonna start with that much, which is 
possibly too much, we'll see. Not a big deal because it will just run off the sides. Get your gloves and then just work it in everywhere. I always use my hands for this. You can use like a plastic scraper if you want. The key is you want to make sure you have coverage everywhere. If you've seen me doing flood coats before, you'll always say like, you'll hear me say, go over every surface, every edge, because if you have any place where the resin doesn't just naturally flow and touch, it's gonna not sit there. It's gonna, you're gonna have a void there and it's gonna look bad. So to do a proper flood coat, just make sure you like <laughs> get intimate with the board. <laughs> if that sounds not too, too strange. Um, and just make sure you get every little, every little section, every corner. And doing this flood coat is gonna give this thing, A, a glassy surface, but also a near perfectly flat surface because you're gonna fill in all those lines, all those grooves, and a little bit, maybe like a 16th inch above all that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, leave this for a few minutes, come back with the torch, get rid of all the small bubbles, and then we'll leave it overnight and then we can basically take it off and peel off the excess resin in the morning. Well, both of these chess boards are done. Both of these were done with our 19 by 19 by half inch silicone chessboard mold, chessboard number one. We actually have another chessboard mold that I'll show you in just a minute that's actually a deeper version of this if you want to make really, really deep chessboards or integrate wood or flowers or other encased objects. Uh, one of the things I want to address is because we've had some questions about um, chess pieces, whether we're making chess piece mold, like the actual chess players. Right now, no. Um, to get really, really nice chess piece molds, oh, you okay, yes. is, um, is, is tough, and that's really not our purview. However, Jerry over at Spectre 3D Technologies saw we were working on a chessboard mold, and his company specializes in 3D printing. He's got an entire lab of FDM and resin printers, and these are some chessboard pieces that are actually designed by a designer called Louise Diggers, uh, who designs 3D objects and they were printed and can be printed if you would like to order your own from Jerry over at Spectra 3D Technologies. Yeah. So Jerry sent these up to us to display on this board and they do fit pretty well. I think the king is a little bit big. Uh, there's a little bit tight of tightness between the bishop and the, the queen. However, uh, I know he can actually scale them down. That's the advantage of 3D printing is you can scale up or down fairly easily. Yeah. So he is going to be offering these unpainted. So if you actually want to get your own set of these, again, custom designed by Louise Diggers, and then he can print them for you uh, unpainted. He'll send them to you and then you can paint them, age them, whatever, to match your chessboard. Probably a better option than casting your own chess pieces because you will not be able to get this type of detail uh, from a silicone mold. The amount of undercuts and stuff on these pieces would be near impossible to properly get with a silicone, a small silicone mold, and even making them would be crazy expensive. So I think for the, the pieces, if you wanna have pieces that are nice enough uh, to match the size of this board, and maybe if you're gonna do some, some wood, like a wood platform like this, uh, reach out to Jerry at Spectre 3D. What is that? A lion. A lion? Yeah. Uh, I think they're dragons. What is that? It's a lion. I think they're dragons. Lion. What do dragons do? I fly them um the dragon. There's a dragon outside? Yes. Oh no. We should probably run. Yeah. Hmm. So Jerry hasn't released pricing on these yet, but you can reach out to him. He may also develop a second design set in the future if the demand is there. So in this video, we created these two boards here with our 19 by 19 by half inch chessboard one mold. It is uh, obviously half an inch deep. The squares are two inches by two inches by 0.2 inches deep. It is a perfect mold if you're doing resin only, jesmonite or even concrete. However, if you wanna step it up and get something really thick, uh, we do have this guy. This is our 18 by 18 by 1.5 inch chessboard two mold. So it's slightly smaller in terms of footprint, but it is quite a bit thicker. The squares themselves are 1.75 by 1.75 and they are three eighths deep. So they're a little bit deeper than this guy. So this depth is going to allow you to encase small objects within those little squares. And of course do encasements um, inside this board, uh, inside the mold itself. So if you wanted to use wood or live edge or flowers or other objects that'll fit in here, um, this might be a better option for you. It really depends on what you're making. Now keep in mind that 
uh, your standard run of the mill, you know, 10 by 10 or whatever, 11 by 11 mold from Amazon, you know, $20 weighs less than a pound. These things are serious. This is like a 10 pound mold and this is like six or seven pounds. Um, they use platinum cure silicone and we make them here in our shop in Guelph, Ontario. So they are not cheap. Silicone, uh, platinum cure silicone these days is ridiculously expensive. So just be aware when you go to our website, that don't have a heart attack. <laughs> but I'm gonna also assume that the pieces that you're making with these molds are not going to be cheap either. You're investing a lot of money, uh, a lot of money in resin and a lot of your time to make these. So anybody that's gonna be buying one of these finished chess boards or a chess board with say finished 3D printed players like this are not going to be spending a small amount of money. These are very expensive to make and the molds are gonna have to justify that. If you have any questions, you can of course reach out to us at craftedelements.com or info at craftedelements.com. You can leave a, a message or a comment or a question below here in this YouTube video. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it, including when I do a video with this 18 by 18 by one and a half inch mold, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Otherwise, you can shop these molds and more at craftedelements.com. Thanks for watching and happy making.